Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Monday edition of Boohead Radio. Hey, we have a ready-made panel. We have one new individual who uh, is Sean, a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Hey, Sean, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good. I mean, uh, it's great. The more the merrier. The more people that find out about this program, the fewer listen. So it's really great to have people who actually want to come on. Stephen, of course, Stephen Rose is with us, who's uh, reset his router. And sure enough, here he is in the flesh. And Matt, the only Cleveland Indians fan who doesn't wonder why Andy Diaz isn't playing. He is from Ohio and he is a, an Indians fan. And uh, who knows who else might join us in the course of the next however many minutes we decide to do this. How's everybody doing today? I'm Great. doing okay, Mr. Muhead. Doing good. Good. I mean, everybody, well, the, I know the Eagles guy's doing good. I mean, you're like on a permanent morphine high. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, the only thing that's bad is that the Phillies season is up and coming. So, Ooh. yeah. I, I hear you. You got the Sixers. You got the Sixers. So that's a, a, a damn good thing because uh, they're at least winning and they're in They're in the hunt here, you know? They, that Joel you know, Embiid guy is just incredible, man. That guy's going to be the next Giannis Antetokounmpo. Like they said, he's going to be up there with that guy. Yeah, well, and Cavaliers are seeing uh, Giannis uh, uh, tonight, so that'll be uh, real interesting. For those people who are watching who uh, – haven't heard the news. Kevin Love will be playing on a minutes restriction tonight for the Cavaliers. Uh, his hand is well enough to play limited minutes. Unfortunately, uh, we've lost our head coach, who uh, we still don't know what's wrong with him, except he, they came out with a statement uh, saying that he was having chest pain and he was having lack of sleep, amongst other symptoms, and that batteries of tests had found nothing. Although, I did talk to some people at Cleveland Clinic that they found an abnormal growth inside him that was oddly shaped like Dan Gilbert. Wow. You're not taking this seriously, folks. I, I don't know what's wrong with them. I, I, I really don't think that we uh, are going to know either, but this has been something that I've been warning everybody about, and now he's taking a couple of weeks off. Now Larry Drew, uh, Larry Drew, he of the 15 and 67 record with the Milwaukee Bucks, he is our new acting head coach. Ooh. That. That'll be really uh, fun to watch his rotations. If you like Ty's, now you wonder why Ty wasn't doing anything this year. It's because he was lacking REM sleep. I mean, this is what they do to torture prisoners, you know? They, they, they prevent you from sleeping. And this was the guy who was making the critical decisions in the game. And it was like, uh, Ty, Ty, LeBron's been out there for 82 consecutive minutes. <laughs> Ty. Hi. Yeah. Mr. Moorhead, we got Bronk in the UK is joining us. I know. Bronk is always up, – he's a fixture. Uh, introduce yeah, you to I'm Sean from Philadelphia, too. Bronk. This is an Eagles fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There were, years ago, there were very rare sightings indeed. There, They were uh, definitely uh, an exchange. Is he a bald Eagles fan? No, no, no. He actually has hair. He just doesn't comb oh, okay. it. So he looks much better. Uh, say, I told you, he looks damn there better with a hat. And uh, <laughs> I said most people that wear hats are bald. So oh, there you go. Yeah, you see, but no, he's proud of his team. He has something to be proud of. None of us are wearing Cleveland Browns hats. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> I actually don't have a ring either. So there you go. Very paddling alongside with Jimmy Haslam and Hugh Jackson. Yes, uh, Stephen Rose is there. It's like a Houston Texans hat. They don't even sell them. Yeah, I know. I was a bit late. I was making a bagel with uh, cream <laughs> cheese and salmon. So shout out to me there. Oh, so, my goodness. Yeah, let me ask you a question since we got an Eagles fan on here. Um, yep. What did you miss out on more? The Wentz draft? I mean, the, the pick for potential Wentz or the pick for Watson? Or would it have mattered? I Maybe mean, to the Browns, which one was the worst mistake? Yeah, which one was the worst miss? Which what do you think was the worst chance of miss on? Do you think? Oh, we only have one. Was... Year, we only have a partial year of sample on Watson, and we only have a year sample basically uh, on Wentz. Uh, to be honest with you, 
Uh, I'd say that Wentz might be a little bit more proven a commodity at this point because, you know, maybe teams hadn't had time to scheme Deshaun Watson yet. Uh, now, of course, it's going to be easier that he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> Uh, okay, look, I'm sorry. I should I, I shouldn't be in such a jovial mood. Um, no, no, not at all. But uh, it's hard to say which one is worse. But uh, they're both egregious errors. Okay, they're both the kinds of mistakes that organizations don't recover from very quickly. So there you have that. Um, I wanted to start out the program today before we got into uh, whatever odd discussions. UMBC, which is the only NCAA. Uh, Do we have to talk about college basketball? College yeah, basketball. For a minute. Well, then get the fuck off here. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is my show, and I'll decide what we talk about. Um, University of Dickie v. They're up in Baltimore. Dick, oh, well, I'm Dickie V. Said, I got to tell you something, Stephen. I really, I want to tell you something here. UMBC is the only college that. That, that sounds like a bank. And oh, baby, time. let me tell you something. I, I thought I pulled into an ATM machine <laughs> that said UNBC on it, and I thought it was college-affiliated. And I, I'll tell you something else. They just built an $85 million arena at UNBC. It's bigger than the college is. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. Wow. UMBC, that's all anyone wanted to talk about. UMBC, UMBC. Is it UPMC or UMBC? Is it the United States Marine Corps? What, USMC? What is it? <laughs> and the answer is, yeah. it was really nothing to get excited about. You know, it's kind of yeah. like sex with they, the fat girl when you're drunk. Nothing to get excited about. They, 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 we already knew they were going to lose the second round. It was just a one-round thing. We automatically knew they were going to lose to Kansas but State. you know what we didn't know, Stephen? What we didn't know is that everybody was going to tune into that game and watch the worst fucking basketball game that yeah. I have ever seen. I have seen better high school games than that one. And I don't mean to whiz all over UMBC because UMBC Athletics kept tweeting shit out. You know, it's like, thanks, everybody, you know, for appreciating our run. And it's like, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. I'm getting a cramp in my hand. It's like... You know, I, your run? Is that what a run is? One win. One win. <laughs> they, sh they shot almost 30, only 30% 30 from the floor, missed wide open shots, oh. and time and time again kept driving into the lane and moving the ball. They, they turned the ball over. I mean, it was like incessant. And the thing that was amazing, as Dickie B would say, I don't know what I'm watching here, baby. <laughs> K-State, it's not like they're any better. I'd expect more from K-State because it's an actual college that graduates people. Well, kind of. <laughs> you know, it, they were both terrible. That was a horrible basketball game. And, like, do you know that UMBC in the first half went five minutes without a basket in the yeah. second half? Ten That's minutes. college basketball. <laughs> fucking college minutes, basketball game. 15 minutes of a 40 minute game without scoring a field goal. I'm like, make it stop. Make it stop. I can't. You know what, Moo? You know why UMBC won that first game? I'll tell you why. It's because the Cavaliers never win without LeBron. Well, you've lost everybody in the chat room, too. Um, I'll tell you what, you can't can't you that Michigan-Houston was a good game. Did you see Houston was up two with three seconds left, missed two free throws, and Michigan came down, shot a three at the buzzer, and won. Well, you missed the free throws, and you know what's coming next. But, you know, the, the, I'm not done with UMBC yet because 15 oh, out of 40 done. minutes, you don't score a field goal. And Dickie V is at home because Dickie V doesn't get to do the games. You know, they – preclude him from announcing the games because it, it, postseason has to have some credibility and they couldn't have him on there. So he's sitting at home going, I'll tell you, baby, what I don't understand. He's on Periscope. <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't understand, baby. They've got 15 minutes, 15 out of 40 minutes without scoring a field goal. And let me tell you something. Why is this fucking game still close? <laughs> Imagine Dick Fattel calling the uh, Browns games. How annoyed would you be in, in, in Hugh Jackson's that coach? Yeah, yeah, it'd be like, oh, guess what happened? Kaiser threw another interception. What did <laughs> we do? Get a T.O., Hugh. 
How did we get real and put a real man out on the field? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what Browns fans need. What? Is UMBC going to put up a banner that they beat the number one seeded team in the uh, March Madness? That's, oh, yeah. that's their championship, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That mean, and they're, they're going to reserve the jerseys. Yeah, they're going to hoist them to the rafters of their new eighty-five million dollar yeah. building. And you want to know the funniest part? I'll tell you the most corrupt part of it all is that the first thing UMBC did after losing the game is we're going to offer a multi-year contract to the coach, Coach Ross, because we know that he wants to move on to bigger and better things. You bet your ass he does. It's never going to get any better at UMBC. It's like. I came here thinking it was a bank. I thought it was a, I was going to be in an executive position for a bank, and they ended up giving me a basketball team. They're losing three of their players. All of them were supposed to be good. Grant, who my impression of Grant is shoving away people with his arm in front of referees and getting offensive fouls. And then the little guy, the dwarf, who I, yeah. I really thought that he had some kind of a congenital birth defect. And then... Uh, the third guy was the guy who was supposed to be their big scorer, um, and I'm not finding his name in my memory because I've tried to put it out of my memory. Number ten, um, and he was supposed to be their their big scorer, and he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. All three of those guys are graduating, so I hate to think what they have coming back to UMBC. One of them won't be the head coach. I can tell you that right now because he's going to move on to a Real Division One program. That's uh, and the university knows it. They're saying we're going to make him an offer. Of course, it's not going to be able to compete with the bigger schools. It's like, well, then let me introduce you to my two friends here. <laughs> this is what the agents going to tell you. You know, it's like, what well, you're going to give? You know, it's going to be like one of your Philadelphia agents there, Sean. It's going to be like, hey, let me tell you something. You 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 you're going to offer my guy what? What, what are you going to offer him? What are you going to offer him, man? <laughs> it's like right here, right here with your three-year, $10 million offer. Right here, right where my groin merrily rests. Yeah, you're not going to keep that, Coach. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I got Tony the Calf now jumping in. And Tony, and, and I, swear, I swear if we get one more person on here, it's going to be like an episode of Match Game. Well, I mean, there is a or Amsterdam, and I'll be Scoy Mitchell. Let's go. And and I, I want to warn everybody that there is a weight limit in this uh, yeah. uh, Google Hangout. So oh, between, <laughs> me and, between me and Moo, we're already pushing it. Can. I know we're going over the edge as it is. I mean, yeah. but I'm I'm slim and svelte comparatively. But uh, uh, but I mean, still. Uh, yeah, so if you start noticing the screen tipping this way, you know, just write your, write your laptop and look. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Somebody put Tony in the, in the middle. We need a fulcrum. God, I love you guys. This is the reason I do this fucking program. I love you, everyone. Yeah, and and then could you imagine? Drew Sprennan, Bruce Drennan. <laughs> uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Sean, he's uh, he's a, an announcer on uh, Sports Time Ohio. It's like I was forced. I was forced to watch. I was forced to watch the UMBC game. I thought I was going to be getting some kind of banking investment information, and it turned out to be this horrible game with Kansas State. I hate you, Cleveland. Yeah, it was <laughs> worst game I ever saw. I mean, and you couldn't even cheer. It was like. If UNBC pulled a second upset, who cared? Because K State was so terrible. God, that was. You know, but then the one shot that did go in, I couldn't believe the Loyola of Chicago. Okay, that shot they did twice, didn't they? Two games in a row, didn't they? Two games in a row. But the second one, that shot was not even online. How did that bounce? In the way it bounced twice and fell through the hoop. I mean, it's like. Unbelievable. Hey, you know what's more interesting than college basketball is Tony DeCalf's uh, cap collection he's got hanging on his wall. Why don't you I scroll up and show some of them caps? Now that's more interesting than college basketball. Hey, Tony DeCalf, let me ask you a question. You weren't in the video last uh, two weeks ago or two episodes ago, but you were in the comment section justifying the, uh, the Cousins deal in Minnesota oh. over Case Keenum, who's a proven winner. I want to hear your theory or your logic behind that. 
I mean, I'm not making fun of you. I just want to hear. No. Why I'll be glad to give it to you. I don't, I don't. I don't think Keenum is a proven winner. I think he had one good year with really good talent around him. Um, as uh, people in L.A., St. Louis can tell you, Keenum is inconsistent. Um, and I just wasn't ready to give Keenum that money over Kirk Cousins. Now, granted, you can say what you want about Kirk Cousins, how he's not really that good, but I think he's worth the money more than Keenum would be worth the money. And, hey, we're in that position where we had to make upgrades. And, and what do you expect? you expect better than a 12-4 and four record? Or, or what do you expect in this season and wins? When I would be happy with 12-4, and four, I mean 11-5, and five, you know, they – the Packers are going to get Rodgers back. They're going to get better. Well, it's getting um, there. What Tony's saying is it's getting into the playoffs. It's most important. Yeah, and he yeah. feels that he will have an advantage if his team gets to the playoffs yeah. with Kirk Cousins as opposed yeah. to Keenum. That, I think that would be his logic. The fact that Kirk Cousins has trouble wiping his own ass, that, uh, <laughs> that, that's really a I think we all agree issue. on that. <laughs> That's a different issue, and one that needs to be taken up by his <laughs> proctologist. We had we had to make moves that when we got uh, trounced by our buddies Eagles there, and well, we got Cousins, we signed Sheldon Richardson, and now we're looking for the draft. So, all right, uh, Sean, I'm going to ask you, seeing as how you've been so kind as to grace us with your uh, with your celestial Eagles presence. Um, what is the belief amongst the majority of Eagle fans with Foles and Wentz? Is there any question who should be the starting quarterback in Philadelphia? There's no doubt. I think Wentz is our franchise quarterback. I think he will be the starter coming towards next season. Um, I wouldn't mind to keep Foles as a backup. Um, I absolutely Foles absolutely impressed me coming in when Wentz went down. Um, so, yeah, I mean – like I said, Wentz will be the starter, um, but Foles is, is going to be that guy to back up Wentz if he goes down again. Um, what I an insurance policy! What an insurance policy to have. I mean, yeah. you know, the the Cleveland Browns have had an injured quarterbacks, multiple quarterbacks injured, and each guy down the line. It, it, it's really kind of a sad thing to say, but the first guy isn't good. The next guy down doesn't have one arm, and the next guy down who plays, who's the third string guy, has no arms and legs. And this is what you know. But to to have that happy kind of feeling that hey, if something were to happen to Wentz, we got a guy we can plug in who's just, and we're not going to miss a beat. That's got to be. Uh, and I thought it for seems sure like somebody would trade. Oh, yeah. I thought for sure somebody it's would absolutely trade. Absolutely amazing. Um, I'm glad that um, we had Foles as a backup. You know. Uh, see, when, when Wentz went down, uh, a lot of people were t- texting me saying, even a lot of my friends thought that the season was done. But to me, I believed in Foles. And look at what he what he got us to. Mr. Moohead, isn't it crazy knowing that the Eagles have two quarterbacks that can win games? And we have a lot of teams in the NFL that don't have one. Some have negative one. Fuck you. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 but that's the way it is. I mean, it's like there are people who have more money than they know what to do with, and then there are people starving. I mean, this is the way life is, and it is a tremendous advantage. There, and there have been teams. I remember, you know, back. I remember, I'm old. All right, when when Bob Greasy got injured, and, and you know, Earl Morrill. Yep, yep, yep. You know, you had Earl Morrill behind Johnny Unitas, and you had. Uh, uh, then you had Don Strock behind, uh, who actually played for a year in Cleveland, came off the bench at, at playoff time. Who played for the, yeah for the uh, uh, for the Dolphins? There uh, you had Frank Reich. Frank Reich w- was great for Buffalo. Uh, has the the two greatest comebacks in uh, NFL history under his belt behind Jim Kelly, and uh, now you have Foles. Who was all but forgotten and thought and pre- presumed washed up and was ten minutes away from retiring from the game and he wins the Super Bowl. So you just never know. Matt, let me ask you a question because I see that you're uh, uh, you, you, any of the Indians' moves and who they sent to AAA uh, surprise you? Not really. I mean, I, I expected what I knew. We I knew we uh, released uh, what was it, Melvin Upton? Uh, <laughs> Junior, senior, it really, it, it honestly does not matter 
uh, wish Melvin Upton it was. Uh, yeah. I think it was BJ, but... Uh... Well, he changed his name because people thought that he was a street hustler. Um, <laughs> Here's my question on the Indians list. When the hell is it going to be Andy Diaz a shot? I mean, well, please. the problem Andy is I think they're going to give him a shot once it's clear that he that he has the disease, okay? Mm-hmm. So, no. Well, they're going to give him a shot when he has a position that he can play. And the problem is... He's not a good enough third baseman at this point to supplant Jason Kipnis at second base, all right? You would, so, you would think as strong as he is, you would think he would hit a home run last season, but he didn't. No, I mean, that's not what he does. But he does hit – he consistently makes great contact. He has a great OPS, and these are things that you look for in a player. But it, it was a failed experiment with him in the outfield. He needed a GPS system, and uh, he doesn't have a position right now, and it's – they, they want to work him up into the big leagues, and I don't know how they're going to do it. The only thing we can hope for is that Kipnis Kipnis is, and that he be, just does what he does every year, and he screws up so that uh, uh, J-Ram can move to second base, and then we can move Yandy up to third. Because like I said in the last show, that was the 22-game winning streak. The lineup yeah. Yeah. was... That's uh, a, that's 22 games in a row? Yeah. That's sick. sick. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the best person is possible. Now that Santana's gone, and uh, I mean, they have Yonder Alonso, I don't know much about him. But... I mean, Alonso has two Art. home runs today. Huh? Two more? Two more. Two. He hit two today. Oh, That's really? five. That's five for the spring. Yeah, he's got five. He's hit two today. God, I'm getting hard just thinking about it. <laughs> And I'm um, Alonzo on the last episode of Moohead Radio. Yeah, so I mean he's doing all right. I mean, but we, uh, you know, I feel bad for Yandy Diaz, but you know, the I'll thing that was his chance, he'll play in June and July. You know what the funniest thing was? People say that Tristan Thompson became complacent when they gave him money. Yes, but you look at the money that Tristan Thompson made, which was over fifty million dollars, and maybe you'd become complacent. My favorite story is Abraham Almonte, the Cleveland Indians. I minor- stayed. Yeah, they guaranteed him eight hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, and he came into spring training twenty-five pounds overweight. That's my kind of guy, <laughs> Abraham Almonte, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, he's the only base runner I've ever seen who tripped over his own gut. It was pathetic. <laughs> they put him in the outfield, and he was fucking lost. And and even Tito, and and you know, Tito's one of those guys. If you said to Tito. Francona, by the way, Sean, the manager of the Cleveland Indians. If you if you said to Tito, you know, the guy who killed all the students at Parkland, what can you tell us about him? Tito would say, well, you know, he was a pretty snappy dresser. Tito's the kind of guy who doesn't say anything bad about anybody except Abraham Almonte because he said, well, he came into camp overweight. And he got lost in the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> there was no sugar coating. It's like, yeah, we gave the son of a bitch eight hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. He bought himself a manufactured home, and that's it for him. He's How long did he last? Just a year. Yeah, he was up and down. He was like a Duncan yo-yo. He was up and down, up and down from the minor leagues, uh-huh. and they finally said that you know, and he had a steroid incident in between. He then, did. Right? Yeah, and so, uh, but that's how he lost weight. Obviously, it was with because when he went off the steroids, it was like he became the Stay Puff guy. So <laughs> yeah, it, it was just really, uh, hey, Michelin man, uh, it was bad. Uh, it's a Mr. Cluehead. Now that we're talking about Tristan Thompson, Cleveland yeah. obviously is eight and seven. You said Love is playing tonight, but on limited. It is. That is, yeah, yep. limited minutes. I, I told you with 11 games left, 12 games left, they were going to have to bring him in sooner or later because they need a, a, a number of games to try to gel this last juvenated off. This is their last chance to have some yeah. sort of offense or some sort of relevancy going because yeah. after Love, that's it. Yeah, I, they've put him on uh, masturbation restricted minutes too with the hands. So yeah, that hand injury. Yeah, lefty, <laughs> uh, uh, hey, lefty, you're not doing so good. Yeah, not doing so good here, lefty. Um, yeah, but uh, Kevin is uh, going to play, but how much he's going to play, I don't know. The other thing is that Kyle Corver is questionable and a game time decision because not. It turns out his brother is gravely ill which we feel badly about, but he's still nursing a bruised foot. 
Uh, and so they're not sure whether they're going to play Kyle Korver or not. The rest of the guys, Rodney Hood, day-to-day, Tristan Thompson, day-to-day, um, and Larry Nance Jr., day-to-day, but they're not playing tonight. So uh, yeah, don't bet your money on Cleveland against the Bucks. let's put it that way. Bucks. You, yeah, how is Ante Zizic going to guard Giannis? <laughs> Ante Zizic has been like awesome. He's shooting like 27 of 32 from the field uh, because they're all dunks and layups. And uh, oh, he's trying his heart out. He's trying his heart out. And hey, give him credit. The guy's, you know, he's in there doing the best he can. I, you know, the Cavaliers had all the trouble in the world just beating the Bulls. And the Bulls were trying to lose. I mean, Valentine, Darnell Valentine, was throwing the ball in from 35 feet, and he was trying to miss, and they were going in. I mean, but, but then they didn't they set Marketin and Chris Duhon out, and all of them they sat like yeah. three starters out. Yeah. Yeah. Marketin was Zach sitting. Levine, <laughs> Zach Levine and Chris Dunn, and they, they were trying to tank, and they it was like the UNBC K State game. It's like, wouldn't you win already? And the Capitals going, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> I think the Cavs, when they go to the playoffs, I think they'll finish. They'll be out second round, I think. Yeah, the Cavs, are, I would really be surprised if they survive one round. I don't, I, I don't even know what team they're going to have because they're all hurt. You, you know, and it, it's happening all over the league, though. You see it all the, the, the first se- round. The, yeah, gone in the first round, I think. I, I don't think that they can sustain a seven game series because they're not healthy. I also think that the Celtics, I mean, the Celtics are resting Kai Irving, and I know that his knee isn't all that bad, but they've also got, uh, you know, uh, now we're going to do Tommy Heinsohn. Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart. Now, there's a guy. There's a guy. He robs convenience stores like big baby Glenn Davis used to. Um, I, I really, you know, Marcus Smart, they're thinking of surgery on his thumb. You've got Jalen Brown, who's been out. Uh, everybody is getting hurt awesome. around the league. And, and uh, I think Cavs would, go ahead. I think Cavs would make it to the second round, though. I said, uh, I think Cavs would make it to the second round. Cavaliers. Well, I don't know. I'm get, I'm they're, getting... they're like two games out of eighth place right now. If they finish eighth and they have to go to Toronto right away. Yeah, and that is a legitimate possibility yeah. because there's yeah. very few games. I mean, right now, uh, you know who the eight teams are going to be. You just don't know yeah. how they stack up. Detroit's fucking trades for Blake Griffin and then falls to 20 games out or something like that. Well, the Pistons, I mean, you know, Stan Van Gundy, you know, if he had a, a you know, a nervous eating habit before, now he's, you know, gained 55 pounds watching his team play. I mean, can you imagine it's like, we just brought in Blake Griffin and where'd we go? Oh, no! You know, I mean, you know, it's... Uh, some it, it, like like Blake Griffin was going to be the answer, you know. And I, I didn't understand why you would bring in Blake Griffin to play with Andre Drummond. That never made sense to me. Right, let's slow our team down. I think that's a great idea. All right, let's see what else we have to actually legitimately talk about here. I like to. Uh, I, I should go into the uh, the chat room because there are people in there. And uh, okay, uh, let's uh, let's see who's in there. No, there are people in the chat room. When they can be everybody that's in the chat room. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Ron Shane is saying the Cavs look like a bunch of rich guys playing barn ball. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, it, it is. They're slowing the ball down, the ball sticking. They play one good half, and, you know, and then they, they disappear and then go back into the slow as molasses mode. I, I've come to the conclusion, I want uh, some opinions in the chat room, uh, would you play uh, Jose Calderon maybe more than George Hill? Because it seems yeah. like when George Hill's on the floor, the ball is just sticking. Oh, I would. I'm yeah. loving Jose. I mean, he's not the best point guard in the world, but, I mean, they've got nothing to lose at this fucking point. Yeah, now now Michael is saying, uh, what's up, Moo? I wish I could jump in, uh, but I'm out and about. I've tried and failed to connect on my phone the last few shows. So, yeah, I guess this is – and who knows? This could be just uh, a YouTube issue, Yeah, you know, because there's too much of this Maybe. going on. You know, and Amsterdam is saying Bronk and Matt are the only chatters under 112 kilos. 
<laughs> That's absolutely right. God. It's Moohead Radio. We're heifers. Leave it go. My God. People are just such little pussies. They just. Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Moohead, if uh, LeBron James was to go to Philly just to kind of entertain an Eagles fan here, mm -hmm. what would you expect? Oh, here you we know, go. go to the finals? <laughs> You mean if he were a tight end for the Eagles? No, if if uh, no, I said if LeBron <laughs> went to the Sixers next year. If he went to the Sixers, would the Seventy uh, Sixers be a uh, contender? Do if you think if, they make the finals in the East, I think that LeBron would have to have a psychological evaluation. That would be the first thing that would have. You know, they do a physical usually, but they would have to check him for psychological damage. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't think that with LeBron, there's enough in Philadelphia to make a deep, deep playoff run. I like what they've done compared to where they were, but if you still look at the pieces and you you look at where they're at in the standings, uh, the 76ers are doing like the Bucks are doing, and it's like each team gets hot, like the Heat got hot, then the Heat started losing. The 76ers got hot, and then they started losing. The Bucks, the same thing. And now it's the Indiana Pacers that got hot, and they will start losing. And so everybody is just kind of hovering at around that same winning percentage. I don't see LeBron joining a team where he doesn't mean a deep, deep playoff run. I see LeBron joining a team where there's already pieces in place, and he can be the thing that throws them over the top. So it's inevitable he has to go west then. He has to go to a Western Conference team, if that makes sense. That's what the village people think. Uh, Unless he stays in Cleveland. Like. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing about going west, though, is uh, it, all that competition having to go up against well, the Warriors. You know, it, it's you could, Rockets, you could like fucking the Spurs who are always staying in the yeah. east makes sense to me. But I, I don't know how the Celtics are going to get him. But the league probably wants that. Because I think what the league is finding out is that you've got two really good young players in Jalen Brown and Tatum. Those two guys are good young players, but they can't yet be counted on because they're so young. And when Kyrie's not on the floor for the Celtics, they're not winning. Consequently, Kyrie needs help. And, uh, you know, I don't see the guys like Horford are, are going to be guys who in the deep playoff sense are going to throw them over. Uh, they need LeBron James in Boston. All right. That's what they need. That's what the league needs. Because I don't know that any of these other teams, you look at the Milwaukee Bucks. They've got Giannis, yeah, but I mean, as long as Chris Middleton is playing every other game, shooting well, shooting lousy, shooting, you know, uh, and, and you look at the, the, his cohorts on that team, and it's like, eh. He's got Brogdon. He's got a couple of guys, but it's not nothing. Er, uh, Baker, what's his name? A Maker or whatever? Or Baker. Bob Baker. Baker. Bob Bob. I mean, he's okay, but like you said, they're, they're just a hot and cold. They're just like a – like typical, like just win two games, lose two games, win two games, lose two games, you know. They're four scumps is – box of chocolates you never know what to get you know that it that's the milwaukee bucks and i don't think lebron james is going to sit there and say you know i'm going to take that next big jump with chris middleton uh i i don't see that happening so if it's going to be in the east somehow it's got to be boston and i don't know how but the league does manage to get it done i don't know if you saw alvin gentry's rant against the uh the referees yeah oh that was like it was like Alvin Gentry is like Old Man River. He just keeps rolling along. But he never says anything. He never makes waves. He finally got sick of it, man. Yeah. He's like, he goes, I watched this all year. He goes, and the refereeing is horrible. This is not the same league that it used to be. And it's like, you're right, man. It's the league that the league wants. James Harden could be throwing up a three less than I watched it. It's the Timberwolves. Jeff Teague was two feet from J James Harden, he flailed his arms, and they called the three-point foul, and it's like, he didn't even touch him. I agree. Yeah. And he, I noticed now that the Timberwolves are a game out of ninth place. Yep. We lost We lost Jimmy Butler. That hurt. De Derrick Rose. Oh, wow. No, it, this is the Derrick Rose curse. There's only it's one awful. thing that could be worse than Derrick Rose coming to your team. No, no, your team. No, <laughs> no. It's Derrick Rose... Coming to your team, but fucking a Kardashian before he arrived. That's the <laughs> only thing that could be worse. That would probably be an improvement. If he was doing God that. almighty. I mean, Derek Rose is like, 
Cursed. He is the black cow of death. (laughs) There it is. He is the black cow of death. It's the black cow of death. He's carrying. Black cow of death is nothing on Derek Rose, man. God only knows. God only knows. Yeah. And and to watch that team have that nice season and watch it go piss down the drain in the last 12 or 13, 14 games of the season. No, I hope it doesn't happen to the Timberwolves. I know. Why, why did they get Rose? Why did they get him? Uh, Tom Thibodeau. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's Tom I Thibodeau. Knew, I knew it was over when Butler got hurt, though, because Butler is the lifeblood of the team. And the glue. Quite, quite frankly, Towns and Wiggins aren't ready to take the next, next step yet. Well, and again, it's who you put around them, too. And I think that I'm looking at the depth or the lack of depth on that yeah. team. They've got, I, they've got a nice starting five. You know, yeah. five Johnson's a solid player. Jeff Teague, for what he is, he's a solid point guard. But, I mean, they've got – I mean, Tyus Jones is okay. But they've got nobody off the bench. Yeah, the other 20 minutes of the game, yeah, you got a problem. you got a big Jamal minus. Crawford is, is 39 years old and jacking up 24 shots a game. And that's what Jordan Clarkson aspires to be. That's the scary thing is that Jordan Clarkson wants to be Jamal Crawford. And it's like, God almighty, uh, there's not a shot these guys see that they don't like. Um, yeah. But and I, I hate to see a team like Minnesota that really should be in the playoffs. I Mr. hope they don't lose it in the end. Mr. Moohead, uh, just to entertain, Matt Ogden is a Miami Heat fan. I'm just curious, do you possibly see Miami Heat with the addition of Dwayne Wade and Hassan Whiteside and – all the other guys they got on their team, do you think they could pull a first-round upset over Toronto, or you don't see that happening? I don't see that happening. And if, again, this talk about Dwayne Wade is just like the talk about Isaiah Thomas. Uh, so that you understand, Isaiah Thomas, when he was with the Cavaliers, was shooting 37% from the floor. Since he's joined the Lakers, he's shooting 37% from the floor. And if you look at what he was shooting with the Cavaliers from three, it was 30 Three percent, and if you look at what he's shooting for three from the Lakers, it's twenty-two percent. He's actually gotten worse. If you look at Dwayne Wade, Wade was shooting forty-five percent from the field with the Cavaliers, and he's down now to about forty-three percent with the Miami Heat, and he has lost ten percent off an already questionable long ball from thirty-two to twenty-two percent. Wow. Consequently. Dwayne Wade is not an addition that is going to help them in any real meaningful way. Uh, But I think that there's going to be upsets because so many of these teams, I mean, really, three three through eight. Three through eight. No, I mean, in the East, what separates? The Wizards will find a way to choke, okay? The Pacers are finding a way to overachieve, Yep. But you don't know how much longer that's going to last. And the other teams just get hot, get cold, get hot, get cold. And the Cavaliers aren't healthy and have had no mojo whatsoever. If I'm correct, I think Cavs, Wizards, and uh, Pacers, and Sixers are like all within 40 and 30, 39, yep. 31 range. Yep. Like one loss can move you down like five spots. That's correct. And, and, and so if Cleveland ends up the number six team, uh, you know, and ends up playing the Wizards, who are the number three team, that would be an upset if they beat the Wizards, right, based upon seeding and placement. So there's going to be a lot of movement, I think, in the East. In the West, nothing ever plays out the way you think. And, and the Rockets, I think the Rocket, the two most suspect great teams are the Rockets and the Raptors. because. Oh, yeah. the, the Raptors are having this magnificent regular season, but you somehow get the feeling that they're like a comet that could burn out. Oh, they're, they're like the Atlanta Hawks were a couple of years ago when the Hawks were the number right. one seed. Except they're they don't have a head like coach that. who cries. I tell you, Budenholzer, <laughs> that guy's got, got very sad eyes. I mean, well, I, I feel very badly for him. Seed and Derrick Rose went out, and then the Sixers won that round, I think. They pulled the eight seed upset off. And uh, the, the Bulls did not look any good at all once, Rosie. Remember that's when he tore his ACL the first time? Yeah, I'm sure he remembers. Uh, yeah, it, it, this could go any number of ways. But, uh, you know, I could see Cleveland finishing third. I could see Cleveland finishing eighth. I could yep. see I, – I, it could be any which way. And play, they, they have a very – For the Cavs to finish third, then to finish eight, or it doesn't matter because the way they're playing is not well. Yeah, well, but 
again, they have guys. You talk about the Raptors bench. The Raptors bench has been the strength of the team. They're one through 10, right? They're playing 10 men strong. But those back five men, they've never really played in the playoffs. And their two big guys, DeRozan and Lowry, have failed in the playoffs consistently in their career. So I wouldn't make them such a favorite coming out of the East, despite their regular season record. I think Boston is going to come in healthy, and I think Boston is legitimately the the best team in the East as far as the way they're coached and the system that they're capable of playing. But they also have a problem shooting the ball. They have offensive woes, and uh, that can you know that hurts less in the playoffs. They're a good defensive team, and that's what's probably going to get them over the hurdle. The Cavaliers are the worst defensive team, and that's what's going to kill them in the playoffs is they can't stop anyone. Mr. Muhead, are you shocked to see the Indiana Pacers where they're at considering they lost Paul George and you thought with Oladipo this is a rebuilding yeah, team? I'm shocked that they're in Indiana. I really am. I'm, I'm shocked that any professional team could be allowed to do business in that state. So, yes, I'm very surprised. A um, uh, bunch of Bible-banging, oh, conservative, right-wing gun toter. No, I'm not going there. Um, no, am I surprised? Yeah. But you know something? When you have something like we have in the East, it's chemistry, isn't it? I mean, nobody is so talented with all these injuries that the Cleveland Cavaliers are having, and with losing Kyrie Irving, their talent advantage went away. It dissipated. I can't help but think that, you know, it's going to be a chemistry issue. And I think the right now the Indiana Pacers have really good, uh, really good chemistry. Now, Mr. Moorhead. Let yes. me ask you a question. Sure. Now, you you, you talk about the Cavaliers, right? What what do, what do you think the odds of them winning the Eastern Conference uh, Championship if they if somehow they make it? Well, they'll make it. They'll, they're going to be in the playoffs, but the yeah. odds of them – the thing that I see, you know, there are some lost seasons where things, you know – there isn't a single thing that's gone right. We, there's no reason to believe it's going to start now. I mean, we've had nothing but injuries. Now our head coach is dying, or who knows what the situation is with Ty Lu. We've got a situation where Kevin Love's been gone. We, uh, we traded Kyrie Irving. Then we had to get rid of the bench that we assembled uh, and try to put in younger guys, and they're guys who played for the Lakers and lost their whole careers. Um there's been no time to establish chemistry. There's this specter of LeBron James leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's hanging over the organization. Um, the odds are really against Cleveland making a deep playoff run. I think I can't. Uh, you're breaking up, Matt. Say again. I said I think that is going to happen. LeBron is going to leave Cleveland. Well, I think that it's pretty well. I mean, at this point. What's he going to stay for? I mean, it's like, so LeBron, what made you stay in Cleveland? Oh, I'm, I really wanted to stick around to see Ante Zizic develop. I mean, <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, big Z, man. Maybe we should talk a little Cleveland Browns. Hey, I got, oh, I got yeah, to talk for you. Talk about the Jets trading up uh, for the third pick. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's paying attention to what I wrote on the on my page. Now let's Thank talk. You. To you. All right, so let's go to the panel for this. You don't need to hear my big mouth. Um, what do you, what do you each of you? And we'll, we're going to go in a certain order here. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, all right. We're going to let weight carry the day. So Tony, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Jets trading up to three. How is it going to substant uh, sub? substantively change the Cleveland Browns draft. What do you think? Well, here's this. I think the Browns are set on Darnold at one, which I oh, think is the biggest mistake wow. ever. I think they need oh. to go for Rosen. But oh. I, at the same time, I really think they should just say fucking go for Barkley. I know they love Carlos Hyde. Um, but, I mean, so I think Darnold goes one. Rose, or Ro, they're going to get Josh Rosen. They signed Teddy Bridgewater. For five hundred thousand guaranteed, so he's not even guaranteed to make the fucking opening day roster. Um, they have McCown, and they're gonna have the pick of the quarterbacks because you know if Cleveland doesn't go Barkley, that means Pat Shermer is gonna be frothing at the mouth to get Saquon Barkley next to Eli Manning. Yeah. So 
I, I, they're in the they're in the prime spot to get the best quarterback, in my opinion. All right. Now, uh, let's go to our Eagles fan next, Sean. What do you think? Uh, the New York Jets trading up to three. How does it change the look of the draft for the Browns at one and four? Oh, boy. Oh, man, you know, I think that the way you guys are, you know, you guys got some – you guys got good players from the trade too. Well, you got T- Tyrod Taylor, uh, Landry, you know what I mean? But Jets – yeah, they do need help in quarterback wise themselves too, and uh, I don't think it was a bad move at all. I really think it was pretty good. Um, you know, I mean, I, I didn't mind it. Do you think it's going to change who the Browns select? I mean, looking uh, at it realistically, for sure they're drafting up, moving up in the draft to choose a quarterback. And if the Browns were looking to go a Barkley one and get their favorite quarterback at four. Now that's going to change the odds of that favorite quarterback being there at four. And the question is, will Barkley be there at four? Uh, you know, uh, I think the only depends, <laughs> yeah, I think depends. the only thing I can think of, the Browns are going to choose quarterback one. And I agree with Tony. I think they're going to take Darnold. And I think the reason they're going to take him is because they're going to be able to rent out space on his forehead. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a like, like, revenue. Like, yeah. All right, uh, Stephen. What do you think? Wow. Um, well, first of all, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not going to draft Saquon Barkley, if they've already come to that decision, if they already made a profound decision subconsciously in their minds, wherever that is, for Jimmy Haslam, and he says, "I'm not drafting Saquon Barkley," then I would have to assume they should consider trading that number one to number two. And maybe getting an extra pick in the next round or next year or something because – and then drop down and then see what they can, you know, get from there. Because if you're going to get a quarterback, why go with the first pick when you got five choices? So just trade down to number two from the Giants, take an extra pick, and then draft a quarterback. Man, well, if they trade to number one, that city's going to burn. Well, I think the city's going to burn anyway terrible. because if you select the wrong guy at number one, the yeah. city's going to burn. Um and that's the, been the problem historically with the Cleveland Browns. Um, uh, Matt, do you have uh, – well, you're not a Browns fan. You don't even care. Uh, <laughs> Neither oh, am I. <laughs> I'm totally the cast of Browns fan. Yeah. Bronk, what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? I think if there's a team out there that drafts worse than the Cleveland Browns, it's quite, quite possibly the New York Jets. How many shitty quarterbacks have they gone through in the past twenty some years yeah. that no one fucking mentions? They never right, mentioned like, the no forty spin. fucking jet quarterbacks that are god awful. Do that. How can a guy who's impotent be named Woody? <laughs> oh, he's That's the ambassador to, to Great Britain now, old Woody Johnson. You know Woody, Woody Johnson. Yeah, give me a break. His Johnson hasn't been Woody in decades. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think if I were the Browns, I'd draft Barkley one and trade out of the number four pick to some idiot team that wants to draft Darnold or Mayfield, you know, and then get two picks in the first round. You yeah. know, maybe draft some crap quarterback at 22 like we always do and get an offensive lineman or another wide receiver. Why am I reading so much on uh, 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 online that the Giants – would consider a quarterback at two. What's the? Uh, I don't understand that at all. Unless they're giving up on the Eli Manning. You guys only got a year or two left anyway. Well, I mean that's it. But they have given Eli Manning a starting position, and uh, you know it would be hard for me to believe that they brought in Nate Solder at the price that they paid him, which was a king's ransom, and uh, and to draft a player who's not going to play. When you are trying to salvage your old quarterback, you've got to bring in some offensive help. The fact that Barkley can receive as well as he does run, it would be hard for me to believe they pass up on him. But I'm reading it on, uh, you know, on the internet. They're saying, oh, you know, they they're just as likely to go for a quarterback. And I'm like, I don't see how that's possible. Oh, this is all fake news. And the amount of shit that comes out every single year at draft time. It's like just total rubbish. I mean, well, it is, but it's teams playing evasiveness too. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I love Dorsey. Dorsey's like, 
well, the number four picks in play, you know, it's like, you know, offer me your daughter and your wife and you can have it, you know, is <laughs> <laughs> anything that will divert, you know, you know, and they're never going to uh, he's a poker player. He's not going to divulge or give you any clue or hint as to who he might select with those picks. So uh, it was up for play. The Jets were interested in going to number one, which, you know, and that's the thing that I wanted to respond to you on, Sean. You asked the question, and finding out that the Jets were trying to negotiate with the Browns for the number one pick means they have a specific quarterback in mind. They do. There is one guy that they want above and beyond the others because you wouldn't be talking – with the team that has the one, if you were interested in a couple, knowing that you could move up below that and still get the guy. So I think it's not frozen. E but even though they've moved up to three, it still doesn't assure. What if the Browns get the quarterback that the Jets want? Wow. This is what makes me wonder about Woody Johnson. I mean, to me, you're all in or you're all out. If there's a guy that you're positive that you want, unless you have a spy in the in the Browns draft room, it wouldn't be hard. Too. Oh no, it wouldn't be. Like uh, do you remember a couple of years ago when they actually had a picture of their draft <laughs> on the line behind them? They did. They did. They, they, yeah. they did. Yeah. I think that was Pat Shermer, wasn't Pat it? Pat Shermer, yeah, the kumquat, the human oh. vegetable. Yeah. You know, the whole draft board live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people just reading off going, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> well, we'll pick him now. <laughs> I mean, they're really fucking stupid. But, I, I, I mean, the, the Jets, unless they're going to read the minds of the Cleveland Browns, they're not assured of getting what they want. And that's what makes me puzzled about uh -oh. moving, moving up to three. It's like there must be a consensus amongst people that the Browns want Darnold. That's the only thing I can think of because even Woody is smart enough not to go in that direction. Mr. Moohead, are you going to be excited about drafting Sam Darnold with that Frankenstein face he makes? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm I'm nice about it. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what Darnold's upside is. Darnold's upside is Brady fucking Quinn. Let's not draft Darnold. That's as, only as good as he You know what Darnold's here. face is, Stephen? Have you seen his face when he throws a pick? He goes, yeah. Well, it's what yeah, you'd expect yeah. to see if Jason got the hockey mask off. That's what, that's what the fucking face is. I mean, my God. It's like a horrific, terrifying thing. Children. Will be removed from the stadium if he takes his helmet off. He's like, like, not going to be the there. face of the team, man. He's not going to be the face. You remember the old bitter beer face commercials where they would drink yes. the beer? The face would deform. That's how his face looks like when he gets when he makes that feature. I mean, somebody brings their six-year-old kid, little Timmy, into the stadium, and it's like, look away, little Timmy. Oh, I did. Oh. I did Skype for life. I just saw Donald's face. Oh my God! You remember what I told you? I said line up Darnold next to Kaiser. You got Kaiser going, and then you got him. Going. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, and sixteen. <laughs> now I saw his face. Now I'm a believer. Oh my God! I'm never gonna sleep again. Oh, uh, Kaiser and Darnold. Jackson's <laughs> oh, and sixteen automatic. <laughs> oh my God! Kaiser yeah. and Donald would have a scare off to see who, how many kids they can scare off. Who can scare off the most kids? Yeah, I mean, they're going to sell Darnold masks for Halloween. It's going to be, it's going to be like a fucking promotion, you know? I, I want to see your reaction, Mr. Moohead, when they draft Darnold. You should do a live reaction. Oh. There. I want oh, to see I, I, want, I will. I will. I mean, it's just like the halftime and postgame show is if you want to see Mr. Moohead go off on a wild, crazy tangent, you know, uh, I have to come up with a nickname for him, though, you know? I've come up with some of the greatest nicknames in the, in the history. What? Lurch. Lurch. Oh, uh, Lurch. Not that, yeah, that, that's Willis, the pitching coach for the Indians. Uh, no, that's Sasquatch. <laughs> well, he had multiple. Right. Uh, until I got it right. I mean, when yeah. they draft, if they draft Sam Donald, imagine the press conference the following day. You got Hugh Jackson with his rat face. You got Mr. Haslam with his county jail suit on. And you got Donald at the press conference. God. 
Yeah. Oh my. The only thing that's better is here we go. Nobody oh, no, knows Joe my Banner. name. But... <laughs> Hi, this is Joe Banner. You probably know me, Sean, because I spent I spent a little bit of time in Philadelphia. I'll tell you, I I, I think that's the cheesesteak I just ate. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I, no, uh, no. Ben, where did you go? <laughs> Only Luke's? <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe Banner is, is like my, my favorite guy in the world. We've had so many great faces in Cleveland. Then we had Pat Shermer, who's like, Mr. Lobotomy. I mean, you know, yeah, we, we've had them all. All right. Well, it's three minutes before seven o'clock. I'm going to get out of here because I got to watch the Cavaliers lose. I mean, play. So, uh, Paul Paul Reed's Reed's playing playing. Tonight, by the way. What? Whoever is playing and starting. Oh, he is? Good. Well, that yeah, gives us a guy who can put the ball in the hole anyway, which is good. George Hill, Jeff Green, Kyle Korver, LeBron, and Kevin Love is your starting. I don't really want to. Mr. Pruitt, before you log out, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think was the biggest Cleveland Browns botch since they returned? I can't oh. remember the player's name. Was it Rude that threw his helmet on the field against the Cle- – against Dwayne the- Rudd. Dwayne, Dwayne Rudd. Rudd. Uh, Bottlegate. Um, the greatest botch. Um, under the flag. Uh, I think th- no, you know, if, if I were going to say the biggest botch, it would be Johnny Manziel because yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I mean, psychologically, he's impaired. He's got substance abuse problems, and he wasn't good enough or big enough or anything else. So, I mean, that would be like the purest biggest botch. There have been so many. I mean, the guys that they. I mean. Uh, uh, Justin Gilbert, are you kidding me? Oh, Justin Gilbert, Barkevius Mingo. I mean, the worst single play has got to be Hugh Jackson going for fourth down, uh, fourth and two. You know what? I, the thing that's amazing is Barkevius Mingo, and this I'll leave you all with this thought, because th- stop and think about it. Barkevius Mingo, whether he played in Cleveland, which was a shit team, or New England, a good team, that no matter what quarterback he was rushing had a force field around him. <laughs> And, and Mingo off. would just bounce <laughs> off. I mean, it would be, he would be deflected. I mean, he'd have a clear path to the quarterback, and boing, he would just go off in another direction. A fucking force field. It's like yeah. anti matter, you know. He just like can't collide into him. You know? I swear to God, it's like Star Wars, baby. He's got a, he's got some kind of a force field in front of him. Hey, Mr. Roulette, who was that y'all drafted in 2006? And he didn't even last one day on the Browns. He was the first day in training camp, and he tore his uh, ACL. And oh, we never saw him after that. that. That was a free agent. That was free agent, and that was uh, your mate with, with your Charles Bentley. Yeah, with Charles Bentley. Yeah, I felt oh, bad for Ohio that guy, State dude. University guy in or New Orleans State. Yeah, he lasted one play in training day. It was a it was a first scrimmage. Could have happened to a nicer guy out. too. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. My my favorite injury has got to be Gary Baxter. Oh, oh Gary Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a stroll down memory lane here. Hey, who the guy that threw his helmet off against the Kansas City Chiefs, though, and ruined that? Because the game was over. Oh, you're bitter about that. Off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Dwayne Rudd thing was just, like, so Browns. I mean, it was like, oh, my God. It's like, you know, the game's so going. The only thing I saw worse than that was the kid in high school. There, there was a kid playing in the state championship of high school, and – the clock was running down, and there, the other team had no timeouts. He went back to throw, and he scrambled to scramble the clock out. And when the, the clock expired, he threw the ball up in the air, and Joy ran off the field, but the play was still live. The other team picked up the ball and ran it into yeah. the end zone, what? and his team lost. Wow. 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 Uh, and you, you know what I thought to myself? I thought to myself, that kid has to leave that town now. <laughs> I mean, me. Because he's forever going to be, oh, that's the kid who threw the ball up in the air. You know, Dickie V going, I'll tell you something. You know, he's trying to get into college. Don't draft this guy. He threw the ball up in the air and lost the game for his team. You know. But I'm surprised Rudd didn't leave town after he threw that helmet. You guys won 39 to 37. What the hell are you throwing your helmet during the play for? I don't know. Because he wanted everyone to see that it was he who made the play. I mean, God only knows. It's been like, it's like God puts these (laughs) thoughts into people's minds, but only when they're in Cleveland. I mean, it's peculiar. All right, guys. Got to go. Go ahead, Matt. One last thing. Way to fuck games up for them. 
Yeah, that, that it's the nature of the Cleveland Browns. He I just the art like Cleveland developed an art to losing that they they say that you know. Well, they certainly have found more ways of doing it. All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate everyone joining. Everyone has to promise that they'll come back and do this again. Okay, I will be back on Friday. Yep. All right. Yeah, we got a crew. And hey, Mr. Ruud, I was thinking before you go, I was wondering if maybe all of us could bring our own little articles, like whether it's Cleveland related or anything else, to the panel that they think is important, and we can go from there. Sure, you you guys can oh, bring in so anything you, anything you want to bring in. It's fine. We will call this the League of Extraordinary Heavy Set Men. Okay. <laughs> I like that. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate it. All right. I'm out. All right. Bye-bye. And thanks everybody out there in Google Land as well on the internet as Bronk dies on the air. Until next time, which will be Friday, hasta la vista, pastor heads. Go Cavs and have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.